Hey, superstars, it's your best friend, Scott. I'm back with kind of a commission video, but not really, because this one's actually for me, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Today, I'm painting one of my favorite baseball players, Al Rosen. So we're gonna jump right into this thing by firing up the laser here and cutting out some wood, and then plop, 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 it's gonna go together like so. And let's get to painting. I sometimes feel weird discussing my processes because my aim is to entertain, not so much to educate. And most of my audience is sports card collectors and not artists. So I got that little voice in my head questioning if you guys really care that I'm painting an orangey brown base coat so that the actual painting is something easier to stick to besides the wood and uh, it sort of acts as a unifying color, blah, blah, blah. But I'll keep talking about process for a little bit because I'm pre-recording this and I can't hear you groaning in real time. I finally found a name for these layered wood pieces so when you have multiple layers that shift as you look at them, it's called a parallax effect. So I'm calling these parallax paintings. I learned that when I randomly stumbled across another YouTube artist video where he was doing a Bob Ross painting on layers of glass. It was cool, but I think my little wood pieces are a lot more practical. When doing a regular flat painting on a canvas or whatever, I have to make decisions on what part of the painting to paint at any given time. And making decisions is hard. Do I tackle a big scary part? Or do I paint all the easy bits first? Or, or do I paint the background or the subject? Or his left ring finger or what? That's, uh, that's a lot of thinking that sometimes gets in the way and analysis paralysis can kick in. But with these, I can only paint the current layer that I'm working on, which is kind of neat for me anyway. The tricky part is making sure that everything matches up. I could paint a pant leg on one layer and then a sleeve three layers later, and then they have to look the same color. So occasionally I will have to do a little bit of adjusting, but I haven't found that to be too bothersome. Another sort of inside baseball process thing I have on my list to talk about is how I start painting each part with two values. I have a medium dark and a medium light and then the orange base coat can act as a medium medium in some areas. And then I continue to adjust going to my darkest darks and then my lightest lights, trying to keep in mind that some transitions have hard edges and some have graded and softer edgy wedges. And um, that's, that's probably enough. I'll stop boring you now, hopefully. So back to me doing a piece for myself. I've got a bunch of pieces that I really want to do, but much like you guys who are waiting for commissions, I have to wait too. I do feel a little guilty about doing this since I have so many people on my waiting list, but after finishing the Grail Quest and that big Field of Dreams painting, I promised that I'd do one for me. So here we are. Right now, these parallax paintings really excite me, mostly because I look at a lot of art and I think like, Greg Kreinler has a style, and Ken Carl has a style, and Triple Play Design has a style, and Dick Perez has a style, and I've always felt like I struggle a little bit with having a signature style. People have told me that I do have a style, but I don't know, I feel like I do so many different things, you know, like marker doodles, charcoal drawings, ink washes, paintings, digital pieces, that it's really hard to pinpoint what my style might be. I'm good at a lot of things, but not great at any one thing, or at least that's how I see it. But I generally don't see artists making parallax pieces like I do, so it's like mine, you know, if, if that makes sense. It might not. I talk to myself a lot, and it doesn't always make sense outside of the little world in my head.
You know, I've been thinking a lot about happiness lately. I've been happiest when I'm making these videos and making art and sharing with you guys, whether it be a video or an actual physical piece. Um, but work work's been getting in the way of that like a lot lately. I'm, I'm grateful to be busy, don't get me wrong, but also pretty frustrated at the same time. So this whole project has been some much needed therapy. I get a lot more of an endorphin buzz out of doing a piece of art than I do receiving whatever silly purchase I've made on eBay to mark completed on a spreadsheet and fill an empty space in a binder page, you know? So I'm kind of lucky that I have that and I'm kind of spoiled at the same time because when I don't feel that art buzz, I get pretty insufferable. So sorry about the last couple of weeks, Mrs. Reindeer. Thanks for putting up with me and my stupid rants. Anyway, back to this stuff. I have had this idea since the 2021 National. I remember walking around with Jake talking about stuff and this one just popped in my head. Well, not like pop like a light bulb going off, but I was inspired by some display pieces I saw while we were walking around. Not that I saw something exactly like this or even remotely like this. So maybe it wasn't inspiration, but more of an impetus. It's kind of hard to explain really, but I still remember where I was and who I was with when my muses sang to me. So it must've been a pretty big idea. What is this guy talking about? I know I've done a few parallax pieces, but none of them featured an autograph. Boom, big reveal. Or maybe you saw that coming, but I'm still pretty excited about it. I do love my autographs and I thought this would be a fun way to display them. And not only that, I made two, one for me and one to sell because I like money. It was kind of nice doing two at once because I saved a lot of time with some of that pesky decision making. I've also been sitting on a bunch of autographed Al Rose and index cards, so that wasn't an issue. Um, I did wonder if anyone would like this idea as much as I do or if it would be hard to sell an Al Rosen piece because no one's ever asked me for one but I actually had a couple people in mind and I ended up selling this one to the first person that I showed it to so thank you Jason. You know, these are all special, but this one feels a little extra special because it was for me. Maybe that's what you guys feel when I make art for you. Hey, neat. Thank you guys for watching and listening to me ramble. If you listen, honestly, I would have just tuned it all out. Um, I got to get going on the next piece. So in the meantime, remember to love your hobby and make it unique to you. And we'll see you on the next one.